All right, guys, it's Copper Cutlass, and it's kind of a gloomy Sunday. It's like noon. Happy Daylight Savings Day. You know, go to work in the dark, come home in the dark, right? So um, I got the 362 apart. Um, the, you know, the cylinder walls look absolutely great. I have to measure it out, and there's no deep scratches. We might just be able to give it a quick hone for a finish. And that would be for ring seating. Um, I'm trying to kind of save the block. Um, there really isn't a whole lot that we can save. And I'll turn the engine over and show you guys why. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but there's a reason why I'm doing this with one hand. All right. So the best part about this is that the caps have been machined. There's studs, there's straps. And that's really, really good. Um, now, this is kind of like... A little bit of a moot point depends on how you look at it whether it helps or not but they're on here and the biggest thing is that this has already been a line honed so that saves us a little bit of work now I am working with my machinist to do it but whatever I don't have to do I don't have to do right now and we don't have any line honed machine there so that was this would have to get sent out and I am at the mercy of what they want to charge I'm trying to keep everything in house with what we can do so here's the deal this crank has been drilled a lot, all right? Uh, you know, you can look at, uh, like, some of the grinding that they've done on this thing, especially, like, in some of these areas. But they've taken a lot of material out of this crank. And to be honest with you, I'd like to start off with a different crank if possible. But the crank is in really good shape, so I am going to check it, see if it would be a possibility to make it even work. Uh, we'd have to spin things up. I do have new rods, um, so I'll get into that in a little bit. But I didn't take off the harmonic balancer. Um, it's a professional product. Um, it's like loose on there. And I don't know like if something is loose or something. I'm sure I'd have to check it out and take it apart, but I noticed that. If not, then whatever. i got to get a new balancer. Um, at this point, um, it's, I'm going to go with a solid lifter cam that's in here because it's good. Um, it's a Jones cam, and um, it's a nice, solid, flat tap cam. Uh, but we will see what money allows. We may go solid roller, but right now, like, the quality of parts is kind of in the crapper, and unless I spend upwards of probably fifteen to $1,600, I'm not going to be able to make it. You know, that's a lot of money to invest in a camshaft when I got one here that works good. And, you know, I think the gains... Although they are significant, they would be a little marginal, to be honest with you, because right now we'd be making more power just with a, this combination and that cam and the cylinder head package that we have that we're going to end up using that's in the car. So, um, all right, so let's get to the rods. Uh, these rods have all been polished, you know, all the doohickeys have been done to them. You know, it's got the spit holes and all of the tricks that you would normally see in an Oldsmobile engine have been done. Uh, ARP fasteners. I mean, just uh, now these pistons are 425 Arius pistons that uh, they are cut for a spiral lock, and we are going to go with a full floating pin with spiral locks. Um, obviously, the oil pan is good. This camshaft is just here as a prop. That's actually what I took out of the 427. Um, but these pistons are nice. Uh, it's not like a modern type ring pack deal, but we're not going to worry about that um, because these pistons are really nice there's minimal scuffing on them on both sides um i have to clean one piston because it get, did get a little bit of rust so hopefully we can polish that up and polish the ring lens i don't see it as a problem the ring's still moving there so i might need to polish up the ring lens on that which is no big deal um now the cylinder heads i did get the cylinder heads for this but they are not currently a sprinkler system uh and that's actually why we can't use the rotating assembly that's here one of these rods is bent and um, the it's going to be obviously the one that's got the water, the rust on the rings because water got in there. And, you know, you really can't see it. Okay. So let me put this down here. Get this one out of the way. And bring this up. Because really, you don't see much of a bend. You can kind of see it. But these pistons sat out of the whole 6th thou. And this one sits 6th thou 
under the rest of them. It's literally right at, and you can see how clean it is. There's no carbon. So this thing definitely burned a little bit of water. Uh, and that's a dead giveaway when you're burning something like when we had our oil, uh, retention problem because of the piston pin walking on the J headed 350 over there. Uh, we were literally constantly cleaning that piston, burning off any carbon with the amount of oil that we were seeing. So when I took that apart, that piston was squeaky clean compared to the rest of them. So that's, this is like the dead giveaway that this is the bad cylinder. Cause, uh, my buddy told me that that was one of the problems. Um, you know, it took in water and he thinks the crank might be compromised and bent, which I might, you know, I really don't see a bend in the rod. There's a little bit of a misshape, but they're all, these are all cast. And I really don't see much, but um, this is the important one we got to clean up. And, um, you know, at least we got some, we got some really good parts out of this whole deal, which wasn't a deal. These were all free. Um, but I am buying parts for him. He does run a business. I'm, he's, making me a I want to order a torque plate from him uh, for Oldsmobile and uh, some bushings since I've been working at my machinist we want specific bushings for the Oldsmobile engines as I'm probably going to be taking in a couple of Oldsmobiles um, once things are up and going um, we need the bushings for the milling machine for the surface or for the block and um, I want the bushings to be made by him so we can use them and be great so um, that's kind of the teardown. That's kind of the rundown on it. You know, again, the timing chain in there is good. The camshaft's good. We got good fasteners. The block we can probably use. Now they did sit six thou out of the hole. Um, and we're going to have to check the block and maybe give it a little bit of a cut and just get like a 50 thou head gasket. And, um, that would solve a lot. Um, and the surfaces might be good. I don't know. I gotta we gotta check it with a straight edge. And if everything's good and there's no warping, then I'm not gonna worry about it. We're just gonna clean the block up. And obviously we're gonna have to find a crank. So I think I'm gonna be on the hunt for a 330 crank. Uh I forgot what this is, but the the regular cast cranks are good to 550, and I don't think we would be making anywhere near that, to be honest with you. I think maybe on a good day, this car might be making like 435 tops i think and that's i might be generous on that deal i think the car is just pretty efficient at what it does and we get it going down the track pretty good so um uh at this point i'm kind of gonna leave this here i do have i did put money down on some rods from a vendor i'm going with the old replacement scat i-beams and the reason for that is simply because although i could go to a chevy and do the offset grind and we would have readily available rods if I bend a rod or throw a rod out of there at that point, it's null and void. I may as well just go with a rod that will require less machining. And um, it's got a little bit more weight to it. So hopefully we won't have to grind the living bejesus out of the fucking crank and drill it to get things in balance. Uh, I do have another flex plate. I might put a uh, inertia, high inertia flex plate in there. Um, as we all know. The inertia helps us, and I think that's what helps this car too. Go make it a little bit faster. Is you get a lot of momentum going from all everything spinning up so fast that you know we don't see like a big drop in RPM between shifts and all that crap. So, which it's funny the the J headed 350 that's sold that has a high inertia flex plate from Mondello. Um, it's a nice piece. Uh, there's again this engine has a lot of a lot of nice pieces in there. Um, I, I gave the guy a deal, and you know I told him I'm like for that price which you're getting, uh, you're in it for parts alone. So if there's any failure, any question about it, you can take this thing apart. And that's how I like to kind of somehow do things sometimes. But I think I would kill myself if I tore this engine down just for a crank. We're going to make that a runner. And that's going to go to the machine shop before this. And that's going to be my alone practice piece. We're going to mill the heads. I'm going to do valve job on it. We're going to put adjustable valve train on it. We're going to zero deck the block, get some compression out of it, and um, and uh, put a little towing cam in there, four barrel intake, fire it up, and sell it. Uh, and those parts are going to be all have to get sourced because uh, I'm going to need to kind of put this one together cheap. And this is going to be just a this is a this is a untouched, unopened 350 olds. Uh, it's a 70 350, so. Um, it is the, um, 
it is the higher lower compression motor if you will so it's supposed to be like a nine to one but if we get like eight and a half to one it'd be good with a towing cam so that's kind of what i got in mind for that because i need something to practice on and my machinist wants me to do something start to finish on my own right now i'm kind of in the training phase where he does like 75 percent of the work and then i do the rest of it just to kind of get my hands involved but mainly it's a lot of paying attention and pay, uh you know letting me do a little bit of the setup and stuff like that and um uh, so far, so good. You know, he let me bore two holes, and I didn't ruin the 427. So, yay. So I'll let you guys go. Share, like, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. It's Copper Cullis, and we'll see you guys around.